Hi, welcome to Beginning Baritone with Mr. Ablett. I'm going to be your new band teacher for this year. And uh, today we're gonna go through a whole bunch of information about uh, your new instrument, um, what uh, what the baritone's all about, how, how you're gonna hold it, the different parts of the instrument, how to make a sound. We're actually gonna play our first song today as well. So um, if you don't have your instrument handy, go and get it. Or if you don't have it yet, you can watch the video and sort of you know, digest as much information as you possibly can. Uh, gonna be a lot of information thrown at you today. You might consider watching this video more than one time. Uh, I'm gonna go through a lot of information, but it's gonna make your first month of band just way, way better. Uh, just because there's so much to go through and in a classroom setting, uh, having some individual attention uh, for each instrumentalist is really, really important. So that's why I'm doing the videos. So let's get started. Get your instrument out. I'll get mine here. And we'll talk about the different parts of the instrument. So I'm at a friend's uh, high school today and uh, he's loaning me an instrument so I could do the demonstration today. Uh, so you might hear some things in the background and that kind of stuff, no big deal. Okay, so let's start off with your mouthpiece. The mouthpiece has a number of parts that I'll be talking about in band from time to time. Sometimes I'll talk about the rim of the mouthpiece and that's the part that goes right on your mouth. Sometimes I'll talk about the cup of the mouthpiece, and that's the um, this part, the bowl shape of the mouthpiece. And then there is the shank of the mouthpiece. And the shank of the mouthpiece is what goes inside the instrument, inside the lead pipe. That's this right here. Now, it's not threaded or anything. It just goes inside the instrument, and you give it what I call the scooch, where you push just gently and turn at the same time. See, it doesn't get stuck. Push and turn. Now. If you have an accident uh, sometime this year and drop the instrument on its mouthpiece, the mouthpiece will likely get stuck inside the instrument. If that happens at home, don't panic. It's not a huge big deal, but really important that you do not try to take the mouthpiece out yourself. If it's just a little stuck and you can turn it with your hand and it pops out, fine. But if it's really stuck, please, please do not take it into your garage and put it in the vise and start hammering on it to, to get it uh, to come out. I have a special tool that I have purchased from an instrument repair shop that will remove the mouthpieces, okay? So get it to school as best you can. You might have to duct tape the case, the case shut because they don't shut when the mouthpiece is attached and get it to school and I'll fix it for you, okay? Otherwise, you'd have to take it to a technician uh, to deal with it. Okay, so that's the anatomy of the mouthpiece. It goes in the lead pipe of the instrument. That's the part that you blow in, okay? Now, your baritone likely has three valves, one, two, three. Mine is a little bit more advanced. It has a fourth valve. So I'm not gonna be talking about the fourth valve today. That's something you might experience in high school when you're a little bit more of an advanced player, okay? The main tuning slide on the instrument is down here. Okay, and that moves up and down. It should be out about the width of your pinky. Okay, just, just a little bit right there. It also has a water key on the bottom. Now, there's some people that talk about that piece of equipment as the spit valve. Now, if I were actually spitting into this instrument, it would sound terrible, right? It would sound all gross. Uh, so it's actually water that comes out of this, uh, this part. I don't know if there's any water in there. No, not right now. It's just condensation. It's kind of like if you've ever touched something that's made out of metal, like the leg of your chair in the classroom, it feels cool at room temperature, isn't it? And if I go like this, you can see my breath condenses on the bell of the baritone. I didn't spit on the baritone, that would be gross. Don't do that, <laughs> okay? It's just condensation, it's just water. But um, just to be absolutely hygienic and clean, I always keep a rag with me uh, in class. If you don't have one in your case, I'll make sure that there's some paper towel. And you just put that on the floor, and when you hear a gurgling sound when you play, you open up that water key just like that and you can empty your water onto the, the rag that's on the floor, okay? And so we've got three valves, one, two, three. We've got our main tuning slide. We've got our water key. And then this part is called the bell because it's bell shaped. It's just upside down, right? Don't do this, but if I go like this, it looks like ding dong, a bell, okay? The reason why we don't turn our instrument upside down is that often the mouthpiece will fall out and get damaged and we really don't wanna do that. Okay, so now let's learn how to hold the instrument properly. This is a little bit of a tricky lesson for me to, to teach. 
uh, because I'm just a bigger person than all of my students, right? So it's just a lot of the things for me are way easier because my hands are really big and it just, it's a little bit easier for me. So if you've got small hands, that's totally cool. I'm gonna show you as best I can with my big hands and my big arms and everything, um, how I do it and you do it the best way you can. So first of all, we're gonna take our right hand and we're gonna put our thumb underneath this brace. Now every baritone is gonna be wrapped slightly differently. The tubes are in a different configuration, but usually there's a spot for your thumb to get anchored. Now, please don't stick your thumb all the way through that's gonna make your hand position really difficult. Just the tip of your thumb in behind the first valve, okay? And then uh, your fingers go one, two, three on top. Kind of like you're holding on to a tennis ball and you're going squeeze, squeeze, squeeze like that. That's how we play the valves. One, two, and three, okay? And our fingers just touch on the valve caps like that. Okay, now for your left hand, your left hand supports the weight of the instrument. Now, there's no real handle, so you're going to find a spot that feels most comfortable for you. For me, I like hanging on to these tubes, which are attached to the third valve. That's my spot, okay? And that's probably going to be a good spot for you as well. So you just wanna give the instrument a hug, put your hand in some comfortable place, which doesn't cause tension. I don't want any shoulder up like this, right? And neither do I wanna see you holding onto it like this, which is a little bit unstable. You're gonna hold on to that instrument so it doesn't move anywhere, okay? And I'm doing today's lesson standing, but if you were seated, it would be the same thing, okay? In fact, I'll get my chair. Well, I'd have to change the angle of the camera, so I, I won't bother doing that. But if you're sitting down, um, it's probably not going to be comfortable to have the instrument resting in your lap, because then you're gonna to have to go like this to get to the mouthpiece, okay? Unless you're a, a very small person. So we'll figure that out when we're together and I'll give you some advice as to what's gonna be the best position for you. Okay, so bring the instrument up to your mouth just like me, nice and proud, shoulders are down, not all bunched up, right? Give the instrument a hug with your left hand and the right hand, just the tip of the thumb, not the whole thumb, and like you're holding a tennis ball in your right hand, okay? Just like that, that's how we operate the valves. Okay, now you know how to hold the instrument. Um, let's, what should I do next? I'm gonna show you how to look after the valves, okay? So you've got three valves. Like I said before, this one has a fourth, but I'm not gonna talk about it. I'm just gonna pretend it's not even there. Um, so the first valve um, needs to go inside the first casing, okay? So each valve has a number on it. Put my instrument down. Some of the valves, it's easier than others to see the number. This one is stamped right here. It's probably not even gonna show up in the video. Um, really important that we don't get the valves mixed up. So if you put this valve into the two spot or the three spot, then your instrument doesn't work at all, okay? So um, you need to be able to lubricate your valves once in a while, maybe once a week, okay? And do this at home as part of your private practice uh, regimen, okay? Now I've got some fancy oil here. This is called La Tromba. It's not that expensive. It's about 10 bucks a bottle. Okay. And I'm just going to put a, a dab here, a dab there, just as a very small amount. Please don't hose down your valve. That would be, that would just make a mess, right? You're going to end up with oil all over your clothes and all over your carpet. And then what I do is that I rotate the valve as it goes inside the valve casing. Okay so that the oil gets wrapped around the piston <clears throat> and the piston can move up and down with a full coat of, of lubricant all the way around the outside. Okay, now you're going to feel as you rotate the valve that there's one spot where the valve will actually go inside. Otherwise, it doesn't go inside. There's this little plastic knob, or this one's brass on this instrument. Uh, you see that little that little knob there, that little square thing, that is, is called a valve guide, and it needs to line up with the casing, the piston casing, so that the valve actually moves up and down. Okay, once it moves up and down, we carefully screw the valve cap back on, all the way down so it doesn't go clank, clank, clank. There's something clanking on this instrument. Where is it? 
Yeah, I'm looking for it. Yeah, it's a little bit better. This baritone needs a little bit of love. <clears throat> okay, so that's how you oil the valve. That's the, um, the, uh, the long way of doing it. The short way of doing it is because this one has a, like a little needle tip. I can just touch the valve stem and the oil goes inside the valve casing and lubricates the valve. How cool is that? So that's the quick way of doing it during class. If you're like, oh, my valve's stuck. Mr. Abbott's got to get me to play a solo. Uh, <laughs> um, just a little bit of valve oil on the valve stem and it'll go inside and then just exercise the valve like that and get all of that beautiful oil worked in. Okay, and that's how we look after our valves. Make sure when you take your valves out that you never put them down anywhere, okay? You just hold them in your hand. If you get just like a little piece of dirt, a little piece of sand, if you ever drop it on the carpet, oh man, it's brutal. It's like you dropped it into a sand pit, you know? Like you're just gonna end up with so much debris inside your instrument. It only takes one grain of sand to do that, okay? Uh, so if, if it does get dropped somewhere, just uh, run it under the tap just some cold water, uh, and then add some more lubricant to it and you're good to go. All right, so let's talk about how to make a sound on the baritone. We wanna use uh, a, a fancy French word called embouchure. And embouchure refers to the way that we form our mouth to play a brass instrument or a woodwind instrument, okay? Now here's what I would like you to do. I'd like you to say the letter M. Say, mmm, mmm. And smile just a little, not, maybe not smile, but be firm here on the corners, okay? Like me, okay? Uh, your lips need to touch so that they will vibrate. Take your mouthpiece out with me right now. And we're gonna, we're gonna buzz on the mouthpiece just a little bit. So you wanna find a nice comfortable spot right in the middle, not too high so it bumps into your nose and not too low so left or right, basically in the middle. <clears throat> And you can repeat after me. I'll play a little, a little sound on my mouthpiece and you repeat after me. Your turn. I know, it sounds funny, doesn't it? Good. Now, you can play different notes on the mouthpiece as well. You can play high. And you can play low. So let's practice doing what I call a rainbows or roller coasters. And we're going to go really high and really low. I'm going to put my instrument down just for a moment. Here we go. Now, if you can't go as high as me, that's okay. I've been doing this a long time. Okay, you'll be able to do that too soon. Now, if you're trying to play on the mouthpiece and you're getting what I call an air ball, you're getting and you're not getting a vibration, try saying, mmm, mmm. Nice flat chin, not a bunchy chin. Okay, see how I have kind of a frown on my face? That's gonna create kind of a, a, an angry sound. <laughs> okay, I want you to have kind of a smirk on your face like this. Like somebody told you a joke and you're trying not to laugh. Now, this is a warm up that I do on brass instruments every time I play. I've been doing this for decades and I'm still doing the same exercises <clears throat> on my mouthpiece that I'm showing you today. Super important. All the best players in the world, uh, like Joe Alessi, wonderful trombone player, advocates buzzing on your mouthpiece. So if it's good enough for Joe, it's good enough for me. Let's do it together, okay? Uh, so yeah, if you're making a nice healthy buzz on the mouthpiece, let's put the mouthpiece back in our instrument. Scooch. And let's play our first couple of notes, okay? Now, I've written some on the board here. <clears throat> These are our first three notes that we're going to learn in band. The first one is called B flat. That is the name of the note. The next one is called C, and the next one is called D. You've probably done some of this in your music classes in the first 
number of years playing recorder or ukulele or singing or whatever you've done in music class up until you up until band. Okay. Now we read the bass clef, and so that's what a bass clef looks like, and that's how you write the note in music. Okay. So the B flat is on the second line from the bottom, and the C is on the second space, and the D is on the third line. Now, underneath, I've written how to reproduce that sound on the baritone. And so an, uh, a B flat is no fingers down. It's like that. A C is the first valve and the third valve. I know it looks like 13, but it's one and three, all right? And a D is one and two. Let's practice going through those three notes. B flat, C, D. B flat, C, D. Practice switching between C and D. It's a little bit tricky getting those fingers to work the way they're supposed to. Those fingers have a strange connection, the middle finger and the fourth finger, don't they? So being able to switch between those two fingers without lifting the first finger is a skill that we'll work on in band. Okay, so we're gonna start off by playing a B flat. The first note, open. First me, then you. Ready? Your turn. How'd you do? Are you making a beautiful sound? You know, what my teacher told me when I first started playing a brass instrument, he said that you always must play with a beautiful sound. It doesn't matter how fast and how high, how technical, how brilliant you can be on the instrument. If you don't have a nice sound, no one wants to listen to you. So even at this stage, on the very first notes of our instruments, practice making the most beautiful sound you can. Remember a flat chin, a big deep breath, and a big beautiful sound, the most beautiful sound that you can make today. Okay, cool. Let's work on the next note. C. Your turn. My turn. things are going well for you. Let's work on our third note now. Have you been memorizing the notes as we go? If you pause the video right now, would you be able to go, this is a B flat, this is a C, this is a D. Okay, really important that we memorize these notes and we don't just, you know, rely on what's written on the page and have to write in the fingering over and over and over again every time we see that note. Let's just memorize it today. They're just three notes. It's not that hard. Okay, so a D is valves one and two. Here we go. First me, then you. All right, great job. Now, <clears throat> you might have noticed that you can hear me start every note. Can you hear me do that? Like it's not just, whoa, the sound doesn't just sort of uh, fall uh, out of the instrument. I have to do something to start the note every single time. What I'm doing is that I'm tonguing the notes with the tip of my tongue. So uh, if you can imagine inside your mouth, you've got your teeth, your top teeth, which hang down like that. And then in behind, there are your gums and then the roof of your mouth. Well, if your tongue comes up underneath and touches, can you do that right now? Touch where your gums and your teeth meet on the roof of your mouth. And say, do that with me. Try putting your hand in front of your mouth and feel that wall of air just going bang, 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 really clear articulations.
Now, if I do that with the mouthpiece, and then I do that with the instrument, this instrument is just the amplifier of whatever I'm doing here. That's how we make a nice clear sound. Now, there's another way of making a sound where we play a note, we start a note, and then we switch notes. And it makes a nice smooth transition, like from a B flat to a C. I'm gonna play a B flat, and I'm just gonna keep blowing, and then I'm gonna push down these valves, and a C will come out. You try it. B flat, C. B flat, C. Try going from B flat to D now. D, B flat, D. All right, great job. So those are called slurred notes. We have tongued notes and slurred notes. Tongue notes have a very clear, definite beginning to them, and slurred notes are connected and long and beautiful. And we're going to use both in band. Okay, so now let's move on to our third, uh, or sorry, our, our last part of today's video, which is playing our first song with all three notes. Okay, we're going to learn how to play Mary Had a Little Lamb, and it goes like this. D, C, B flat, C, D, D, D. I know you know how this song goes, right? C, 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 D, D, D. D, C, B flat, C, D, D, D. C, C, D, C, B flat. And if you can't play it on the first try, uh, it's your first day. It's okay, all right? So uh, let's play it together. How exciting, our first song already. Amazing. Starts on a D, so push down the first and second valve. And let's play it together. Are you ready? One, two, three. Congratulations, you just did your first song on the baritone. So cool, I'm very proud of you. If you were able to do that, wow, that is a big deal after only just, you know, 23 minutes of, of instruction on the instrument. Good for you, good for you. And if it didn't come out today, hey, you know what? Musicians, uh, we're constantly developing and working on our craft. So good for you, okay? Uh, it's gonna take a while for some of us to learn how to play these songs, and that's totally okay. By Christmas, I know you're gonna be rocking the instrument. So, uh, yeah, the last thing I wanna talk about is putting the instrument away or putting the instrument down if we're in band class. Now, this instrument, these are very complex machines uh, in some ways, and they can be damaged quite easily. So we wanna make sure that we look after them properly. So when I put my baritone down, I either lay it on the ground like this, that way it just can't get knocked over. It's already laying down. Uh, but if I don't want my mouthpiece to touch the ground, and I don't want that, I want my mouthpiece to stay clean, uh, sometimes I will lay it on its bell like this. Now, if you leave it up on its bell, I want you to lean the instrument against something because it's not perfectly balanced on its bell and it likes to fall over. And falling baritones is terrible. We really, really don't want to do that. So I'm going to lean it up against my chair or up against a wall or anything really so that the instrument doesn't get damaged, okay? I'll do that right now. I'm gonna lean it right up against the board here. There we go. And it's never gonna fall over because I'm looking after my baritone. When I'm finished playing, uh, about once a week, I'll, I'll wash out my mouthpiece. I'll have, uh, this isn't the cloth that I use to pick up spit off of the floor or water off of the floor. Uh, this is my polishing cloth. And so I use it to clean my mouthpiece from time to time so that I have a nice clean mouthpiece when I pick up the instrument again, okay? Or a paper towel is another great way to keep your mouthpiece nice and clean. But you can wash the mouthpiece, 
in soap and water, okay? Don't worry about the instrument. You don't have to give your instrument a bath. Um, please don't, you know, take it all apart and try and work on it like that. That's, save that for a technician. But your mouthpiece, the part that uh, attaches to your face, that, yeah, we can clean that from time to time and make sure it stays nice and clean. Um, yeah, and then we put our instrument away. Make sure you're, you're um, looking after your instrument uh, when you're taking it to and from school. Uh, you want to be playing it, uh, especially on days we don't have band, but even if you have band that day, spending 10 or 15 minutes reviewing some of the things we've done in class is going to make a huge difference over the length of a year uh, to your ability to play the instrument and how much you enjoy being in band. The, the better you are at it, the more enjoyable it's going to become. Okay, so I hope you've learned something with this video. And uh, if you have any questions, if you're struggling with anything on the baritone at home or in class, I want you to come and talk to me. I'm the nicest guy in the world. You can come and talk to me and tell me that you're having troubles with your instrument and troubles with your playing, and I'm gonna help you as best I can, okay? Uh, don't hide back there. Don't think, oh, I'll just, you know, band is, is dumb, so I'm just gonna, I, I'm just gonna, you know, make some noise back here or, or pretend to play. Everybody can tell if you pretend to play. Do your best in band. And if you're struggling, come and talk to me and I'm gonna help you. And it's gonna help you to have a more positive experience in class, okay? It's gonna be a lot of fun once you're able to participate uh, more effectively. Okay, so uh, if this video has been helpful to you, watch it again and practice some of the things that we've been working on and I'll see you in band class. Happy practicing.